Today's show is sponsored by a former guest, the FinTech Group, and their solution for cannabis online companies and dispensaries to accept cashless payments. If you own a cannabis dispensary or a cannabis online business, you know that banking laws make it impossible for you to accept any form of payment other than cash. The FinTech Group finally provides an option that was previously not available. To learn more, go to fintechmerchantaccounts.com forward slash marijuana hyphen dispensaries. We're listening to Raising Cannabis Capital, episode 55. So what we're looking to do is raise anywhere between 50 to $100 million, supply this equipment. We have a perpetual licensing with them to run this product, and they'll have the fastest and the cheapest oil out there because the people that are doing it by hand or batching can't compete with the speeds and the process that we run fully automated with a, a minimum amount of overhead. From MJ Bulls Media, it's the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. I'm Dan Humiston, and on today's show, how in less than three months, this former guest has had to completely redesign his cannabis processing invention just to handle the demand. Today in Raising Cannabis Capital, we are joined by a former guest, John Sullivan. Welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on. Well, one thing about the cannabis industry that most people just have a hard time getting their head around is there's no existing infrastructure. You know, we've all heard the saying that necessity is the mother of all inventions. Well, cannabis is the mother load of all necessities. I mean, just about everything in this industry has to be recreated or invented, creating enormous opportunity for entrepreneurs. Let me say it a different way. We know we can't use banks or credit cards. So the necessity to invent a different way to process payments had to be created. And we can't advertise. So there was a necessity to invent advertising platforms. So we thought with all these inventions, it'd be a good idea to occasionally feature different cannabis inventors. So with this idea, I went back to John Sullivan because he was on our show a few months ago talking about his first cannabis invention, which was a robotic machine that linked all the equipment necessary to automate a cannabis processing facility. And it could process over 2000 pounds of cannabis per hour. And like John was like, maybe three or four months ago, we had this, we, we did this interview. We were so excited. You know, before we jump ahead, this wasn't John's first clam bake. He had a couple home run inventions before he got into cannabis. He was the inventor of the most popular cotton candy in the world, Fluffy Soft. And then he went on and invented electronic controls for NASCAR drivers, Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson, which were eventually used by all NASCAR drivers. So He's got some serious inventor chops and I'm sure he saw what was going on in cannabis and said, I got to get in there because these guys need me. So today he's here to talk about what's going on with his invention. I'm going to let you explain to everybody where we are today, less than three months later. So the phone calls that we're getting now are people that want to process 60,000 pounds an hour. That's the bar right now. (laughs) And, you know, to do 60,000 pounds an hour required a completely different approach and a completely different technology because it's just so much biomass that you have to dry, chill, and extract. And we go all the way to isolate. It's crude distillation and isolate. (laughs) To do that completely automated required a completely different set of plans. And so where we're at right now is that we've got a complete automated processing line that can do anywhere from 250 pounds to 100,000 pounds an hour. Can I jump in for one second? Yep. So when you say fully automated, they drive the truck right up to the back or they the forklift and it just puts the raw material right in and that's the last time anybody touches it. It's all That's correct. We dry it, we hammer mill it into the correct particle size we need. It gets put in a super sack where it's, it stays in the drying room while it's waiting to be processed. And then from there, it get, goes into the process system. And once that happened, it goes into a, a cold storage where it gets brought down to minus 70. The uh, alcohol is at minus 70. Minus 70 Celsius. Celsius. They get mixed. And the mix really is where the oil is getting separated. That's completely computer controlled. It's feeding this cryogenic system that we developed that separates the biomass from the oil. 
and then that gets evaporated, the oil comes out. So that's your crude, or you can send it to distillation, or you can send it to isolates. That entire process is fully automated. No one touches it once it gets past the, the mixing tanks. Oh my gosh. And okay, so now that's the million dollar question, or I'm going to say billion dollar question. What happened that we needed to go from 2,000 pounds to 100,000 pounds? Well, what happened is that the billionaires jumped in. So they, they saw this opportunity to say, well, we don't want to grow 10 acres. We want to grow 4,000 acres. You know, we want to grow 100,000 acres. And so they started finding clients overseas that aren't in this market yet that they could sell this product to. And the problem was, is they all started growing, thinking that technology was, was there. And then they found out it wasn't. And they came to us and said, look, we need 60,000 pounds an hour. And uh, right now, it appears that we're the only ones that have that solution. We were also getting phone calls from smaller people that said, you know, I need to do this amount of pounds an hour, and I only have $2 million. This is an issue because everybody's cash flow is tight because they're, you know, in the full-on growth mode. So they don't have the upfront cash to pay $10 million or $15 million for this equipment. And so you are going to use a a model similar that the only one I can compare it to would be almost the software industry where I'll let you explain how it works, but it's, it's what's beautiful about it is it's reoccurring. Well, what the game plan is, is a lot of these farmers have, you know, anywhere from a hundred to a thousand acres of product in the ground. So that's, that's equity, but they don't have the funds to really process that material. So if they join our subscription plan, what we do is that we, we take money up front and then we get a percentage of the crops that they grow. We'll set up the facility in their area in which we can get a co-op of other farmers in. And we help you know, maintain the facility. As there's upgrades, we, we give them the upgrades. And so really there's a partnership now of all these facilities that we would have spread around the United States yeah. in which everybody wins. Yeah. So what we're looking to do is raise anywhere between 50 to $100 million, supply this equipment. We have a perpetual licensing with them to run this product and they'll have the fastest and the cheapest oil out there because the people that are doing it by hand or batching can't compete with the speeds and the process that we run fully automated with a, a minimum amount of overhead. I want to take a quick break to thank all of our Raising Cannabis Capital listeners and to remind you that you can support the show by subscribing to MJ Bulls Premium. It's only $4.99 per month, and you gain access to all previous Raising Cannabis Capital episodes, as well as all other MJ Bulls produced podcasts and exclusive content, including companies' investor pitch decks. Go to mjbulls.com and enter promo code RAISING to get your first month free. The barriers to entry that somebody would have to go over to get to what you're talking about right now. It seems insurmountable. So for investors, it's reoccurring revenue. And when we decide to, to sell the entity, we all know that reoccurring revenue is where the highest values are. Yeah. And so with that, we'd also have a continuing R&D center that's constantly making these improvements and speeding this process up in which everyone in the network benefits from. It. And you have orders right now or pending orders right now, and you already have the equipment ready to go. So you're in the go zone. Yeah. So we have a, roughly about 27 million in the pipeline right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So this has to move quickly. If you're interested, John Sullivan would be the point of contact. We have all of his information on our website. What type of investor are you looking for? Yeah. We're looking for someone who's probably in the, the hemp or cannabis space that knows the market and uh, you know, understands the space. And it'd be a, an equity share. Mm hmm. Yeah, because they're probably going to have to bring a syndicate in for this. Again, John Sullivan, and I'll have all of his information on the MJ Bulls website. And John, I can't wait to talk to you in three months. It'll be you'll be <laughs> <laughs> you'll be half a million pounds an hour. You know, you just never know, right? Never say never. That's for sure. It's an exciting field because it's growing so fast. It's just exciting to watch. That's the other thing that we bring to the table is that. People that are just getting into the space and growing for the first time can network with other members in our group to make sure they're doing it right. Yeah. This is about this whole industry. It's one big community. It's really exciting. Well, John, thanks for being on the show. Promise me we'll be back in a few months because I want to do this again. <laughs> All right. It's good. always a pleasure. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks for listening to Raising Cannabis Capital. To learn more about today's guest or to become a guest, visit our website at mjbulls.com. Today's show was produced by MJ Bulls Media. 
with original music produced in part by Jamie Humiston. I'm Dan Humiston, and you've been listening to the Raising Cannabis Capital Podcast. 